All right, so my name is Marco, and this is my uh, new sword. Um, it is, I just joined a HEMA club, and um, I wanted to train, get the distance, uh, and it's a great exercise, so here it is. This is the uh, Dragon uh, Dragon King, or, um, yeah, uh, our Dragon Squama Sport Fader. It's about three pounds. Uh, it's, my, it's by uh, Kingston Arms. Very, very happy. Very, very impressed. It's very lively in the hand. I was not expecting that that type of quality. Uh, the tip, that's that's the tip there. Uh, you know, I took it to the club and I was a little bit worried. You know, I was like, ah. Oh. You know, everyone's going to know it's the budget model. Um, and, uh, you know, there's the distal taper. If I can get it to zoom, you can see that. Um, uh, very good flex. Um, the, the There's a good section um, for your thumb for the different uh, different types of cuts, that some of the more advanced techniques. It wants to move like the long sword, like it, like it's made. It's it's, I I can't explain it. It's like, like uh, it wants to do. The th the thing it's built for. Um, and I'm just a beginner, but as soon as I picked this up, I was like, oh wow. Um, so there's the the wrap, uh, the, uh, the back of the pummel is peened yeah, a, a solid wooden core uh, the wrap did eventually come loose uh, so uh, yeah it's a very lively blade in the hand I'll, I'll demonstrate that uh, later uh, there's kind of the point of balance right there um, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Like I'm real, just brand new, and and this is the budget, the the cheapest uh, type of sword I could find uh, on Amazon. The, the fader um, that looked like I could would be acceptable to use in the club I just just start joined, and very 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 happy with it. And in fact, this is. The second one I've gotten, uh, I've gotten, I'm going to, you know, I got a second one from my battle buddy. This is the first one I got. Uh, the wrap did come loose after like weeks, a couple weeks of like using it every single day uh, very vigorously. And uh, I've made a scabbard for it. I've rewrapped the handle. Um, and... Uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Like it wants, it, like it's it feels alive. I don't know. I know that's silly. I am a fantasy writer after all, but uh, but you know this is with my own money, not sponsored. Uh, it's you know it's it's great. It's uh, um, it's great exercise and. It's great research because I am a fantasy writer, and it just makes everything come alive. It's it's been really loving this, and uh, some of the swords you could uh, spend double and get well, some of the better. I don't know if it's better, but the more pricier the swords, and um, and uh, you're you know. But now, I have a second sword to, for my battle buddy, and I, now I get to train more. It's not a wall hanger. It, it It's tough. The metal, I had no problems with the metal. Uh, it's held up. Um, uh, first, I uh, thought maybe with the price point, maybe the metal might be too soft, but... It hasn't. It's like, um, but anyways, this is my YouTube channel. 
And if you want to see how I made this, I'm going to make a video of this because I'm going to make another scabbard for the second sword and wrap the handle. And this is just me having fun. I'm still learning, but it oh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I'm a little bit wacky. I'm left-handed. And so I'm just doing a little bit of showing off. Uh, but just, it's just, yeah, one-handed. A two-handed longsword is three pounds. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. If you like dragons, magic, and adventure, I'm going to leave uh, a quick, uh, a sample of some of the stuff I've done. And thank you so much for your time. You're listening to Founder's Keep. Written by M.R.R. Lopez. Narrated by Henry Kramer and Jenna Dulong. Day by day, she watched the landscape change from pleasant lush green hills to dark, gloomy, and jagged granite. These mountains were not green at all. Any speck of color was the beginning of a pale blue glacier, peeking over the barren pointed white tooth-like ridges. Nora grimaced. Even the pine trees near the shoreline seemed more black than green. The ship's crew trimmed their sails as they slipped into the busy sea lane that led to their final destination. Her determined sky-blue eyes gazed upward at the Helvis T lighthouse on the snow-capped mountain that overlooked the city and large port below. The city stood out like a gem, wedged in between two seams of granite stone. Nora suspected the brightly colored buildings of randomly assorted vibrant purples, blues, and bright greens were to make up for their perpetually oppressive gloomy gray clouds and harsh, jagged snow-capped mountains that sheltered the city from the Baru waste beyond. Nora dipped her chilled nose beneath her red scarf. She was glad Vila had gotten it for her. She initially had refused it, but during their brief stop in Talk Ruin, he had bought it anyway, and halfway to Helvisti, he had re-gifted it to her, which she begrudgingly accepted. Master Torin's dark brown eyes did not hold light, only grim reality. He did not smile, he did not laugh, and he never slept. On this night, Master Torin sat in the cold watchtower on top of Dragon Mount and gazed out toward the ocean. The waves shimmered like black diamonds beneath the full moon. Torin did not look at the moon. He did not want to see its face. So many faces, so many faces, too often he saw someone, someone that was dead. But it wasn't them. They could never come back. And then the night was disturbed by the sound of the creaking ladder below. Torin reached for his crossbow. You're awake, Torin grunted. Torin rarely talked, but he did so sparingly and one of the ways to avoid conversations was to beat Simmons from stating the painfully obvious and to put a cork into the endless questions. Simmons grimaced as he bonked his head on the low ceiling and closed the trap door below him and crouched until he was able to make himself comfortable on a wooden bench across from Torin and pulled out his spyglass. The silhouette of a black wing straped across the moon like an obsidian blade. I can't sleep with that drag flying around, Simmons grunted and then frowned as he noticed the crossbow. Cora said you've been carrying that around all over the place, 
Simmons remarked. Torin said nothing. He just sat there, a big black mountain of deafening silence. Simmons focused quickly and turned back toward the dragon. It's massive, twice as big as Rex. I've never seen a bull drag so big, he marveled with dread and awe. It's like it's just waiting for one of us to fly out, he scowled. That's because it is, Torin grunted, and passed over a flask to Simmons. Simmons knocked it back. Only a few drops of hard drink came out. It's empty. I know, he grunted agitatedly. Simmons smirked and took out his own flask and poured a shot of hard drink and handed it back. On the house, he chuckled. Torin quickly emptied it and gave a nod of appreciation. And then the deafening silence continued.